start of our annual three-day pensioners parliament that's been going on for many decades, where pensioners gather from all over the country to discuss issues of concern. And of course today they're meeting just two days before the general election, so there's a lot to talk about. The key thing of course is the social care issue. The other big issues that we're concerned about are keeping the triple lock on pensions and also people are concerned about things like the winter fuel allowance. Every year tens of thousands of pensioners die from cold related illnesses and both the Liberal Democrats and the Conservatives want to means test the winter fuel allowance. We're very worried about that. So there's a lot to play for in this next few days. always been means tested and the means test now is going to be your income which for us is our pension your savings and the value of your property if you add to the equation a figure a hundred thousand pounds everybody focuses on that figure and thinks that is all they will pay for their care will you think again Right? Bringing your property into the equation means all of your assets are up for grabs, bar the thousand, hundred thousand pounds. So anything you have that equates to over a hundred thousand pounds has to be spent on your care before it stops. And that is the call. Since 2010, the coalition followed by the Tories have cut local government budgets by on average 40%. If you're a Labour council, you may have faced cuts of up to 73%. And don't forget, social care is funded by councils. So that is at the root of the crisis in social care. Meals on Wheels is not a statutory service. A vast number of Meals on Wheels services are being closed by local authorities as they struggle with the constant social care funding cuts. It plays an integral part in preventing emergency admissions to hospitals and care homes and provides part of the framework needed to support elderly, the elderly in leaving hospital, thus saving billions on NHS budgets. We would like the government to consider making Meals on Wheels and Community Meals provisions a statutory service. Almost all of our home care has been privatised and there are over 22,000 now private and a few voluntary sector organisations providing social care and government after government has called upon local authorities to create markets in social care. Um, these markets are mad. At one point Kent County Council had 1,200 social care providers. It's a huge drain on public money and more importantly perhaps it is not providing an efficient quality service. Residential care is the same story. Huge amounts of money are being made while our service is being run down. And we know what it means. It's now common for local authorities to commission 15 minute visits. Now we have about a quarter of a million home care workers earning less than the national living wage. We have about half a million on zero hours contracts. 2.5 billion pounds are needed just to keep services as they are. It's our policy to look at a national care service funded by taxation, free at the point of need. Yes. One percent, one percent on taxation would cover that. The Women's Budget Group has shown that if you invest 5% of GDP in social care jobs, you would create over a million jobs, twice as many jobs as you would create in construction, and in doing so, you would pull lots more women into the labour market, and so the revenue to the government would massively increase. Everything in our political life is now expressed in terms of a competition for resources between young and old. Politicians created through policies 
an environment where people were encouraged to buy their own houses. Three quarters of older people now own their own home. But now, it's policies that are preventing young people from owning property. Slashing their benefits, suppressing their wages. If they go to university, we're saddling them with debt. So when politicians and the media say, look at this divide between old and young, this ends up eventually facilitating an attack on universal benefits. I'm going to focus on the TV licence. They have plans to means test it. Now we all know means testing costs more than it saves. But I want, I want us to think about the four million older people who have said that the only companion they have is their television set. Those people, if they take that television license away from them, will just completely degenerate. I'm here to stand up for 550,000 what we call frozen pensioners. That's less than half of the British pensioners living overseas. So there's over 600,000 who do get a pension, but it gets uprated each year, like it does here in Britain. But the rest of us are currently languishing on a frozen state pension. We're being penalised for living overseas. And what this means is that half a million of us are, um, have worked in the UK. We're being deprived of annual uprating's to their state pension. I've been getting 40 quid a week since 2003. Frozen pensioners should be a particular concern because of Brexit. Because currently there's nearly half a million British pensioners living in the EU. Unlike mine, their pensions are quite rightly currently uprated. Once Britain leaves the EU, if they do Brexit, the crucial legal obligation to uprate these pensions, the same legal obligation which the government clings to to justify pension freezing elsewhere, will be gone. Our basic state pension is one of the worst in the world. We're going to be campaigning for a pension based on 70% of the living wage, yeah. Yeah. with the triple lock. For disabled people, this is a life or death election. After seven years of brutal Tory austerity, disabled people are in a battle for the right to live for the very right to exist. <laughs> it was seven years of brutal Tory austerity. Disabled people have borne the brunt of the cuts nine times more than any other group. And if you are a disabled person with high support needs, an ex-independent living fund recipient, you have been hit by the cuts with social care and the independent living fund 19 times more than any other group. Stephanie Bottrell took her own life after being hit by the bedroom tax in 2013. David Clapton, a former soldier, hit by the benefit sanctions more than once. When he died from diabetic ketidosis, he had three pounds in his bank account. The coroner said he had no food in his stomach and a pile of CVs was found next to his body. There are thousands upon thousands of stories like David and Stephanie's. It's important to stress here today that whatever government we have on the 9th of June and whatever we face next, we must continue the fight for equality and for all of our rights. But that is not just for us, but for all the people who come after us. It's a committed group of individuals that can change the world Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. And I will end with this. Let us learn from one another. Let us share our lifetime of worth of experiences. Let us share ideas, build networks. Let us have debates and discussions. But most of all, let's go forward together united and let's build a better world for everyone. Thank you so much, I mean, speaking today. Solidarity with you.